Why am I so happy and proud? <laughs> Comedian Bob Odenkirk is a fan of history. But Bob had no idea that he has an ancestor who had a close-up view of one of history's most legendary figures. The story begins with Bob's fourth great-grandfather, a man named Jean-Jacques Fricker. Jean was born in France in 1790 and was mustered into Napoleon's army when he was still a teenager. At the time, Napoleon dreamed of dominating all of Europe. And unfortunately, Jean was compelled to serve those dreams. In May of 1809, the French captured Vienna, the capital of Austria, then set out to crush Austrian armies, which lay just across the Danube River. But that's where things took a turn for the worse. The French army, commanded by the Emperor Napoleon in person, has been totally beaten at Aspern and Essling by the Austrian army. On the 22nd at 4 a.m., the Emperor thought the decisive moment was come and ordered his cavalry to charge and support the infantry, but the repeated charges of the cavalry could not pierce the center. The Emperor Napoleon, perceiving that his communication was threatened, hastened his retreat, leaving on the field of battle a great number of dead and wounded. Don't follow crazy people into war. <laughs> Your ancestor was there. Wild. What's it like to insert yourself in well, world history? Well, you see history? paintings like this yeah. all the time. That's right. You don't think... Oh, that's my great-great-great-great-grandfather no. right there. But it is. It's somebody's great-great-great-great-grandfather. The battle was Napoleon's first major defeat in over a decade, and it was a bloodbath for the French army, which suffered more than 20,000 casualties in two days of near-constant fighting. Wow. I'm surprised anybody survived at all. Please turn the page. This is an amazing saga that I had no sense of. This is another page from your fourth great-grandfather's pension file. Jean-Jacques Fricker is unable to continue his services because of a gunshot received on May 22, 1809, which caused him to lose the little finger of his right hand, as well as the free use of the ring finger. He was only 18 years old. Can you imagine being physically scarred for the rest of your life yeah. at the age of 18? Yeah. And at a time when manual labor was la was work, mm -hmm. was what you could do, all you could do in a lot of places, and you can't use your right hand. Whew, devastating, devastating. After his discharge, Jean managed to find work as a police officer and settled down to start a family. But a great many challenges lay ahead. In 1813, when he was just 23 years old, his wife died in childbirth. Jean would remarry, only to see his second wife succumb to illness. And Jean himself would drown in a river at the age of 53. Even so, Jean's son, Bob's third great-grandfather, would immigrate to America and start a new life in Chicago just miles from Bob's childhood home. What does having this information restored to you, what is that doing to you? Does it change the way you're seeing yourself? Mr. Frenchman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never thought I'd connected at all to that country, but uh, all those people in those paintings, all those people you read about, those are our great, 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 great grandpas <laughs> and grandmas. Mm -hmm. And they paid the price and straggled forward and uh, lost a lot. And I'm part of that. And it's, it makes me feel connected to people, yeah. to the world. Discovering our ancestors 
can change our lives, helping us to understand more fully who we are, where we came from, and how we're all connected to a much larger world. To see more incredible family history stories, click here. And thank you for watching.